I'd like to describe today an optical bench which I built a few months ago. I'm interested in doing optics experiments, particularly with interferometers, and I wanted a low-cost system to uh, put all my mounting optics on. Uh, I priced it out uh, going buying equipment from the scientific supply stores, and you end up, uh, you know, getting quotes of two, three, four thousand dollars for these kinds of uh, setups. So you can save a lot of money if you're handy with power tools and you want to build the equipment yourself. Uh, so I'm just going to describe the system that I constructed. Uh, it certainly isn't ideal, um, but it got the job done for the types of uh, experiments that I wanted to do. So I just thought I would share with uh, you how I did it. Now, uh, what I'm showing here first is the optical breadboard. Usually the, one of the most important considerations with an optics bench is that you want a very rigid structure to put all your optics onto to minimize vibration and whatnot. And uh, quite often what is used is uh, an aluminum slab, perhaps a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. I've got a slab here which has been cut to one by four feet and um, it's been perforated every two inches with a, a quarter inch uh, hole. So um, I'll just lift this up here just to show that a bit better. Uh, I've drilled holes all the way down on the top and on the bottom and also uh, in this direction along down to the end and these are going to uh, be where you're going to mount your uh, mounting posts for holding the optics and you want to put as many holes in as you can so that you've got lots of different placement possibilities for the different optical components um, but obviously this you know is a lot of holes so uh, you try and put it in the holes uh, focus on the areas which are most important to your particular arrangement and that's what I've done here As I say, the holes are a quarter inch, and uh, once they've been drilled, they have to be threaded. And that can be done simply with a, a typical threading tool here. And uh, because it's aluminum, it's fairly easy to thread by hand. You just put the threading tool into the hole and then turn it around you know, several times until you go through to the bottom, pull it back out, and you do that for every hole. Next issue with the optical bench is going to be uh, the mounting system. And uh, you're going to have to create some mounting posts for your different optical components. And we've d chosen to use a, a 3 inch by a 1 and a quarter inch uh, rod of aluminum, 6061 again. It doesn't normally have to be this thick, but uh, I find it adds the rigidity. So um, this is the system that we've used. And this might cost you 3 or $4 a piece. And they can usually be cut to size by the supplier that you get it from. You also have to drill holes in either uh, end of the mounting posts so that they can uh, mount into the breadboard and uh, so that your optical component can also thread into the top of it. So, uh, you know, you just drill your hole into the, these posts uh, as normal with the uh, drill press and then you thread them as you did with the optical bench. And once that's done, uh, we use one quarter twenty by three quarter inch stove bolts as our primary hardware and these thread directly into the, uh, the bench here we thread them in from the bottom and then uh, you just put your mounting post on top and screw it in and then it's ready to go so uh, these can be placed at various points along your optical system uh, as convenient and uh, we also cut them to different heights. Uh, so generally three inches is the standard height that I use, but I also make two and three quarters, three and a quarter, that sort of thing. Because sometimes your optical component in the end is going to be higher or lower on this post, depending upon how it's designed. So you can use a different height post to vary the, uh, the height of the system that you're using. And that way uh, you don't need to actually build a system which actually varies the height directly on the post. I'd like to describe now some of the optical components that we've constructed based on this mounting system. Generally speaking, uh, I use three main kinds of uh, optical components. Uh, these would be mirrors, beam splitters, and lenses. Uh, and there's uh, various different mounting systems for these different parts. Uh, and, and a lot of the mounting is going to be variations on this, this same kind of theme. So just to show you first the mirror, uh, here's a mirror mount system that I've designed. 
it's uh, because I've made it a little wider and normally this would be a three-point system we've added an extra screw uh, to make it a four-point system just to give it a little more rigidity across uh, the lateral side here and uh, you can see that it is constructed with uh, screw points with springs and then other ones that just have points and this allows you to control the, the pan and the tilt on the mirror uh, while mounting it directly to the, to the uh, breadboard. So we've got our mounting post here which screws into this component using a uh, 1 quarter 20 uh, mounting screw and then we use uh, 3 16 uh, mounting screws on the back of the, uh, the mirror for the adjustment here. So uh, that's basically how this is designed. We also have our beam splitter which uh, uses a different kind of system uh, because the light has to be able to pass through from different sides uh, the beam splitter um, it has to be set up on a, a mounting system like this and again it has um, uh, screw points here and uh, just uh, straight uh, spring points and it's also mounted with a 1 quarter 20 bolt into our mounting shaft this way so um, Another system which is quite common uh, is just uh, where you're mounting a filter or a lens and uh, this is very similar to the, um, the beam splitter mount except that in this case it doesn't have any kind of pan tilt control it's just basically a rigid system that's going to just be mounted directly onto the board so uh, and this is just showing another example here without anything in it so uh, most of the um, optical uh, components that we've constructed are based on this same kind of theme of these of these three different options. Now for making the optical mounts we try to use a fairly simple straightforward system so uh, an optical mount look, may look very complicated uh, when you look at the finished uh, part but in the end it's made with some very simple components what we usually use are uh, just uh, metal rods like this, square rods, uh, wider pieces like this, uh, and we also use L-beams of this kind. And then we just have uh, mounting screws and a uh, bag of springs. And most of the components are based on uh, just cutting these metal pieces to size putting screw holes in them in different places and then mounting them together with the screws and the springs. So for instance, this particular piece, it just has a metal bar which was cut off from a piece like this. So we, you know, cut it to size like this, put the uh, the screw or the um, drill holes in it. We may thread them as necessary. In this case, they're actually not threaded. They just kind of slide down to, through the screws. So. Um, you know we put our screw bolts in here and this is just a single cut piece of metal uh, like from a plate like this which we just cut to size and drill hold in it and uh, then put our mounting post in uh, the mirror which is the most complicated mounting system it has an L uh, piece here which comes from a L uh, beam like this we just cut it to size and put the screws in it so the L beam goes like that a metal plate goes in front we put the holes through in the appropriate places and then just screw through with the springs. And the mirror is uh, just glued on to this uh, outer piece. So it's fairly straightforward the way it's built. You're just taking a lot of simpler components and just putting them all together on a plan. I'd like to describe now the laser that we use. Uh, I mean, we can use various different kinds of lasers, but in this case, we're using a 534 nanometer green laser, which is uh, a pointing laser that you can buy from various different places. Uh, you know, it usually runs on batteries, and when you're putting this into a breadboard system, uh, you're not really going to want to run it on batteries because the batteries are going to run out pretty quickly, and you want to be able to turn it on and off and control the intensity and that kind of thing. So uh, we built a little power supply here uh, to put out uh, 2.8 to 3.2 volts uh, to control this laser and we've just mounted it, we've taken it apart a little bit and put a couple of uh, pieces in here, some wires and whatnot to connect up to the internal battery connections of this uh, green laser and then this just connects directly to our power supply and then we can drive the thing uh, continuously using our uh, power supply here. So this just makes it more convenient 
for working with uh, interferometers and whatnot. Now, uh, as I said before, um, the mounting system is just a variation on a theme. So this is very similar to the beam splitter mounting system, except it's a little larger. So we've uh, put in a control here to adjust the, uh, the pan and tilt of the, the laser beam. And we've also put in various different uh, uh, points here to pin the laser down. And it, we've also put in a polarizing beam splitter at the end which allows us to select out um, uh, different components of the beam on the laser. So this is a little more complicated, but again, it's just uh, basically, like I said, a variation on a theme. So it's just some straight slabs of metal that we cut to size, put the screw holes in and put the uh, springs and then just put it all together. So it's really not that complicated in the end. So here we have our completed optical bench. I've assembled a max ender and a ferrometer on it uh, just to show something working. Uh, basically, we've got the laser set up here at 534 nanometers. We have a beam splitter here and another beam splitter over here, and then uh, two sets of mirrors one here and one over here. And uh, this beam splitter splits the laser into two beams, which we join at the second beam splitter which then goes through a lens and uh, focuses onto this uh, panel here. So uh, this creates an interference pattern that we can then look for fringe shifts on. And uh, I'll just turn the lights out and we can see this in the dark. And I've, uh, I'm using a little bit of uh, inset smoke to attempt to uh, pick up the laser beam in the dark which is uh, a little bit difficult to see, but there you can see a few beams going here. This is just a close-up of the interference fringes from the max ender and a ferrometer in the dark. If I press on the table, we get a little bit of motion, but otherwise it's pretty much rock solid steady.